Hello everyone, welcome back to another video from sysadmin102. In today's video, I will show you how to install the ESXi on HP Elite Mini 800G9. It's a small uh, little computer, but it uh, packed with so much power. If you watched my last video, I actually able to upgrade it to uh, 96 GB of RAM and 8 TB of uh, NVMe. I also uh, able to add it in the second uh, 245 GBE NIC. Before we get started, I'm gonna go over some of the requirement. So uh, obviously you will need a USB uh, flash drive, eight gigabyte or larger. And uh, also you will need the VMware ESXi uh, seven or eight ISO. I actually inloaded the download link. Not sure if this is a uh, official uh, ESXi download site. However, I, I found these uh, on uh, GitHub and I've used this in the past and uh, it have all the ISO and different versions that you can find. And you will need to log in, uh, the username and the password is uh, included in the step number one. And once you've done that, you're gonna download the uh, Balena Etcher on your uh, PC or Mac or Linux. It's uh, cross-platform, so it will work on uh, any operating system. And then you will plug in your USB drive and open up uh, Balena Etcher. Uh, actually, before I do that, I'm going to show you um, where I download all the ISO uh, file for the ESXi. All right, and the password. I thought it was a joke for a minute when uh, I got that password, but apparently that's the password. All right, so in here they have a different uh, version that you can download from. Uh, the one that I specifically download for this one is uh, ESXi uh, 8, version 8. They have variant of it as well. Um, I did select the HBE custom image uh, just because it has some of the HB uh, driver already included in it. And I select the latest versions, uh, which is uh, the one they uploaded in June 2024. All right, next step, we're going to open up uh, Balena Etcher. And we're gonna select a flash from a file. Continue. And we're gonna select a target. I'm gonna select the Samsung flash drive. And we're gonna select flash. It's gonna ask you to uh, enter your password. All right, and uh, make sure that you ejected the USB drive. And make sure you plug in the USB on the HP G9 and then we're gonna get started uh, over on the G9. Alright so when you power on the HP you will select uh, F10. That's gonna take you to the BIOS setting. Alright from here you're gonna use the right arrow key navigate to advance and then you will select uh, system options. On the system option we make sure that uh, the turbo boot is checked, uh, hyper threading is checked, and virtualization technology uh, VTD and VTX check. And we should be uh, good to install the ESXi on the uh, HP G9. When that is done, you're going to select F10 and uh, we're going to save the changes. Yes. The system going to reboot. You're going to select the F9 for boot menu. And from there, I'm going to select the USB flash drive. And we're going to select Shift and O. So this is a workaround for Intel uh, 12 and 13 Gen CPU. Uh, if you continue, you're going to get the uh, fatal CPU mismatch on future. Actually, I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to let it boot by default. And uh, you probably going to see this if you uh, let it boot by default. So this has happened when there is, um, when you try to install the ESXi on the Intel 12 and 13 gen. Uh, the 12 and 13 gen, it come with the 
E core or a P core, and at VMware is not uh, compatible with the the future yet. P core and E core uh, in the server environment, they probably not gonna have P core and E core uh, at least for now. Uh, that's the reason why you have uh, this error, and I'm gonna show you the workaround uh, and how you can able to boot it up and install ESXi. All right, after the system reboot, we're going to select uh, the boot menu one more time by pressing F9. All right, and I'm going to select the boot from the Samsung flash drive one more time. And we're going to select Shift and O. And then you would uh, add Ben in the command line. Uh, space and then CBU. Uniformity hard check panic equal false. So this workaround with the uh, will reference from the virtin.net. So I'll credit to the original uh, author. And when we done that, we're gonna press uh, enter. You might see some uh, red arrow uh, while it's loading. Uh, just disregard. It's be uh, you be okay. And then we select uh, enter to continue, and F11 to accept. And uh, I'm gonna select the uh, Samsung uh, flash drive fit to uh, store the uh, ESXi. So it not um, since this is a home lab. That's the reason why I installed it on the USB drive. For the production environment, I wouldn't uh, do so. Uh, problem with the USB drive is that they do die over time. Um, so for home lab, it's easy just to create a new one. But for the production environment, I would not recommend it to do so. And you're going to select uh, install. It's showing as upgrade because I'm currently having uh, ESXi uh, 7 Poil on that old USB. So we can select enter to install the new one. And for uh, this store, you can select a this store, but uh, for now I'm going to keep it known. Um, the reason why I want to use uh, the 2 4 terabyte for the TrueNAS, and I'm going to use a USB to NVMe adapter to store all the VM on that one. Um, there is a M2 slot for the wireless car. Uh, I'm currently waiting for an order uh, from China. It's gonna be a W uh, lane adapter M2 converter to a NVMe. Possibly, I'm gonna able to add a third uh, NVMe, and if that's the case, I should be able to create a storage room there. But for now, I'm using the external USB to NVMe adapter to store all my VM. So I must select enter to continue. And you have an option to re-add the root password. All right, and when we're going to press enter to continue. And we're going to select F11 to continue. We're going to select uh, enter to reboot. And we're going to disconnect the USB try as well. All right, when you select ship and O, and spay and we're gonna append the boot fix so we're gonna be a cbu uniform midi hard check panic echo false and enter we're going to do the permanent fix after we uh, lock in an uh, ESXi. All right, we're going to select uh, F2. And obviously, you got to enter your uh, password. And we're going to change our host name. So when you go to uh, the config uh, management network, and then under DNS configurations, I'm going to select the second option. And then I'm going to change the local host to um, 
HP dash G9 dash ESXi and select enter so network adapter if you uh, don't receive any IP address would mean that you might have more than one network adapter and you can switch whatever the network adapter that you currently connected all right, when we've done that, we're going to select uh, escape. And we're going to select Y for yes to restart the network uh, manager. And that's it. We should be able to access uh, using the IPv4 address from our um, computer. And from there, we can apply the permanent fix for the boot. All right, next, we're going to log in on ESXi and we're going to apply the permanent fix. So on your ESXi, you should be able to log in with the IP address that show on your uh, console. So it's going to be 10.13.2.141. And we can go to advanced and accept the risk and continue. And from here, you would log in with your username and password. All right. And I'm going to zoom it in, make it easier for you to see. All right. And we would go to... Uh, actions and we'll select uh, services and we're gonna enable uh, secure edit edge all right and from there we should be able to access uh, edit edge using terminal on Mac or Linux and uh, you can using a uh, edit edge uh, client on a window such as a uh, PuDi and then that's gonna be uh, edit edge root at the IP address of your uh, VMware ESXi, so 10.13.2.141. I'm gonna be yes and enter your password. All right, and from there, you just uh, copy and paste the command uh, on my tutorial. I'm gonna copy that first one. All right, and I'm gonna copy the second command as well. All right, and that should uh, fix the boot issue. In the next video, I will show you how to uh, create a USB uh, VM FS storage for your ESXi. Uh, so that's why if you're on a budget or just a home lab, not the um, actual reduction environment, you can uh, store the VM on the NVMe, NVMe or, uh, you know, uh, SATA SSD uh, using the USB to SATA or USB to NVMe adapter. And if you think the tutorial is helpful, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.